marriage and chakras or psycho spiritual centers there is a direct connection between the two now for the fulfillment of marriage or male female relation it is very important to understand to discover your own feminine aspect and the masculine aspect this is the first and these chakras although it was a discovery of a certain person just as theory of relativity is a discovery by a jew albert einstein but it applies to every aspect of life and in every discipline it applies the discovery of electricity by another scientist it does not mean that it is confined to a particular sect clan or group of people electric bulb electricity was developed by alexander graham bell but does it mean that only those people who belong to his religious sect it applies to them no this is a narrow view in the same way along the path each spiritual master does something or he is capable of doing something you can take an example with let us put it as here electricity electric current is at the helm of is at the back is the root cause of all electrical appliances but its manifestation differs if i put in this way that electric current is the shake or the master and electrical appliances are his students or seekers according to the inner capabilities of the body mind and intellect if i put it that electric current is the master and all the electrical appliances are the seekers so the master prepares each electrical appliance according to its own capacity understanding what a person is capable of somebody is capable of being a chef he has his own identity next one is capable of being a carpenter we need carpenters we need chefs we need masters we need university lecturers we need medical doctors we need engineers so according to the inner development of each student the master the light manifests accordingly in the same way all the masters of this university that we can call as god's university their role is for the benefit of humanity whatever research they do that is for everyone its fruits has to be disseminated among all the students this we have to keep at the back of our mind basically there are two paths the path of heart and path of love sufism is the path of love zen is the path of meditation buddhism is a path of the two where both are important but whatever path you choose path of love or meditation if you choose the path of love when you reach the destination you realize that you have attained to meditation and when you begin with the path of meditation you realize that at the end the fountain of love has blossomed into you then there are various combinations of these to say that this particular person is double enlightened is the bankruptcy of the language chain if i put it something there is buckingham palace in england there is president's white house in washington and some other important building in each city there are many ways to reach there as an individual you may be following only one way 
because you do not want to explore the other route to go to that particular building. There are other routes as well. And we get satisfied with one route that we discover that in order to reach to that building, there is this is the route. But if somehow someone says you can use this route as well or you discover on your own that to reach to White House there is another way also, another route. In the same way, the ultimate analysis, ultimate in the process of a spiritual development is to attain enlightenment or fana. So you attain to fana one way. When you are inquisitive, you are a traveler, you are making, you are a tourist guide. A master is in a way tourist guide. His role is to guide all the tourists who are coming to that land, the forbidden land, the land of eternal. He can show different ways and means or routes depending on the individual inclination. It is said about Ramakrishna Paramahans that he travelled on as many as eight different paths. He reached to the top of the hill from this route, he reached there, enjoyed the scenery and everything, he came back, he started the journey on the other route. You can call this that the person has attained to double, triple or enlightenment in different ways, just as someone is double PhD or he does MD in internal medicine, then MD in some other things, so he has two MDs because he is not satisfied with one degree. After doing one MD or PhD, he is qualified to work in the university, but his intellectual quest does not satiate him. So he goes and does the work, again studies and go into, go to obtain another degree of MD or PhD in another subject. We call him double PhD. The same thing happens as it has been asked if Holy Prophet wasallam was double enlightened. Yes, he was. Ram Krishna reached to that state eight different ways. So this again depends on individual capability and also what God wants to exhibit through a particular person. That this person is so intelligent that he has attained to double MD or double PhD, which seems to be rare. But it does happen. Just as I had mentioned in the beginning, that any research or any work that is done by one particular person, the university professor, scientist or the spiritual master is for the benefit of humanity. And to rise above narrowness is the first criteria of truth. If you remain within the narrow boundaries, you cannot feel the freedom, cannot feel the openness of the vast sky. The chakras were discovered by Tantric masters, Buddha spoke, Tibetans spoke, the Jain masters spoke, and Hindus spoke. It is an altogether a different science. Understanding of chakras and the secret is essential for transcendence beyond sex and the kogmara that it creates around life and relations. Most people are born through sex, through the interaction of ovum and sperm. One day you are born through the ovum sperm interaction and one day you die from the same center. There are best known seven centers or psycho-spiritual centers in the body from where life can go out of the body. The last on top of the head the last or the thousand petal center is on top of the hill, on top of the head. And unless you are enlightened, life cannot go from that center. I had the first hand experience of listening how did Lalaji Razilla Talauno Ramchandra entered into the Alame Ghar for 
his life was exit it was witnessed by my grandmother she was the only living master who i knew and could explain to me what happened and gave me the first experience i of that at another time there are seven centers and five presiding deities as you move more and more into present inside you will come across seven lights according to hindu yoga there are seven centers buddhist call these phenomena as seven lights or seven lamps as you become aware these become more and more prominent and easy for you to understand more and more you are detached from the body positions and also you are not interested in desires your energy starts moving towards these the same energy that is contained at the lowest center begins to move upward the first center it is important that these centers are not found in the physical body even if you visit you will not find these centers it is like this there is a passage for the flow of energy or the water and if on that water hose that is connected at seven different points by using the small pieces of the hose and you connect to it. so those places where the two hose are connected there is a no connection if there is a bend or something there the water will not flow freely instead there will come a blockage and all of a sudden the accumulated water will begin to gain momentum and whenever something gains momentum it begins to move in spirals in circles so when it begins to move circles it is gaining momentum gaining speed and when a certain amount of speed is gathered it shoots out from there this is the role of chakra when there is a blockage in the passage you work on that center and all of a sudden the energy leaves that particular center of blockage and continues along the path it can be understood by one more fact that when there is a space ship a space ship that has to travel from its center on earth and plunge into the space to enter another planet it is two number one earth and suppose it is going to mars so earth has its gravitational force and mars has its gravitational force there is a range of the gravitational force of earth so as long as you are moving within the gravitational force of earth you are guided by that there is no problem you can maintain this speed when you reach the threshold where you are neither within the gravitational force of earth no within the gravitational force of the other planet mars in order to cross that imaginary boundary although it is it seems imaginary but it exists existential you need tremendous force to offset one and to enter into another so it needs tremendous force in the same way when you are moving from one state because each chakra or psychocenter represents one stage the journey before that is within that realm and when you are on the border of crossing that center you need tremendous force because if you have decided to go on go for work for 6 months or 3 months you have your family and children in attachment to them desire many things these will bind you to remain in that city but it is important for you to go to the other city for various reasons you have to be strong minded the children may cry the wife may lament 
but you have made your decision that you have to go there and look for new avenues of explore new avenues you have to gather tremendous courage and will power this is the force that is needed to push you into that field where you have to go so the first center which is known as the earth center it is at the base of the coccyx at the end of the spinal cord so the spinal cord moves horizontal in the vertical in human body at the base of that is that center when we look at the qualities of that and these qualities have been encompassed into a particular form hindus have been quite innovative in calling it as a god of presiding deity so the elephant headed god ganesh is the presiding deity it has certain qualities elephants most important quality is can discern danger it is very sensitive he has an elephant head which is very sensitive big ears long trunk big belly each symbolizes some is man of tremendous wisdom obstruct obstruction removal so when the energy basically the energy is stored at that level from there its movement has to begin then it comes to the second center which is water center now in case of me these two centers becomes a little reversal the earth center or muladhar which is the hindi name for it is masculine in male and in female it is feminine so these two centers water center and the earth center they are both masculine and feminine each individual has two tendencies masculine and feminine embedded into him or her to need the earth water is needed then comes the solar plexus solar plexus the presiding deity for the energy is the sun energy that is what it is called solar sun has two aspects the beneficial energy of the sun and the malefic energy of the sun the beneficial energy of the sun that we can very easily understand in the morning when sun is rising it is nascent it does not have the uv rays ultraviolet rays in it that time the rays of the sun are beneficial for the skin the eyes and for the entire physical being and then along with that it is beneficial for inner self hindus have tied this into a ritual of offering water early in the morning to sun and saying a prayer but the scientific reason is when the water is offered facing the sun you are the person is supposed to look at the sun and in the container where the water is put a few drops of oil and flowers black sesame seeds rice all these are significant symbols are put and when there is oil drops and water mixed with the oil because water and oil do not mix they remain separate these rain drops become prism to reflect the light of the sun and break it into its seven components so here it is we are talking about the beneficial effects of sun the light at that time the light of sun is beneficial to human body it has to break into seven components multiplicity the light was one it break into its seven components and each light each color is beneficial and it is light sustaining one for benefit effects has to divide into seven the moon energy moon is the reflection of sun energy 
it is a cooling effect. So when we talk about solar plexus, which is a seat of emotions, seat of nerves, it has the beneficial effects as well as malefic effects. All the malefic effects has to vanish in the process of pure spiritual growth and the beneficial effects have to be amplified. This comes through an understanding. You can use the prayers, you can use yogic exercises, you can do other methods to attain to that state. The malefic effects. So, it is the sun energy, sun and the moon that remain the guiding elements of the solar plexus. And as you know, sun is the cause of bringing life or the light that comes. It is important for the bringing life force into everything sentient or insentient. It illumines everything. After the darkness, it is the light of the sun that illumines everything. It illumines the beneficial effects as well as the malefic effects and you have to move from malefic to the beneficial effects of it. Then sun becomes the emotions or nafs, emotions as we call, can help you as a great force to move forward. It can become a fetters and will hold you from movement into the other channels. Then we come to the heart center. I am giving you a synopsis first, then we will go into other aspects of it. The heart energy. There are people who are weak at heart. There are people who are strong at heart. There are two forces. From here, if you are strong at heart, you are not guided by emotions. It is easy for you to transcend beyond the emotions. If you are weak, then you will be enslaved by emotions. This aspect is governed by two forms of the same deity. One is, these are the concert of Shiva, the Hindu god, symbol with the snakes around his neck and blue neck. These are symbolics. Just to understand, one is Parvati, which is the wife or concert of Shiva through which the creation came into existence and the other aspect through which the Tantra aspect came into existence which is another concept of Devi. This has to understand very clearly. In male-female relation, it is the female deity whose role is more important as far as Tantra is concerned. It is the female who teaches the male, the various aspects of Tantra. According to Tantra, it is said that they are feminine but females who teach the intricacy of Tantra. The most important, one of the important aspects of the esoteric aspect of Islam, which Islam will not accept it, the fundamentalists will not accept it, Islam, in a way, it is male-oriented and female is not given any importance. All credit goes to Holy Prophet Hazrat Nafaghambar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what is the role of Khadija? Has anybody pondered what was the role of Khadija? It was very important role. It was she who gave solidity to the faith of Holy Prophet. It was she who initiated him into the art of Tantra. But because Tantra is of an Hindu origin, the fundamentalists of Islam will not accept it, but this is the truth. I can speak of this only in the company of those who are ready to transcend beyond the finite boundaries of religion, caste and creed. Their only purpose is to grow inwardly. Just as in the university, there are students of different intellectual understanding. Some are satisfied after the high school, they leave the education system. 
some continue it until bachelor's degree others after masters they drop out of the university a very few rare students enter into phd or research in the same way spiritual knowledge or spiritual awareness has stages someone attains to this state devotion singing hare krishna people the others singing and they gain kind of recognition in that kaval singing that we get the money they get the fame they get recognition they do not want to go beyond that but there are many realms beyond that also devotion is always love is always duality but have you ever thought what is beyond the duality of love what is beyond it? would i explore that beyond love is compassion when you are not interested in male female relation but love becomes the fragrance of the flower fragrance of your being so that aspect can only be explained in the company of those who are transcending beyond the finite boundaries of religion from time to time i mention one may be brought up in a particular environment particular religious upbringing but his being is neither hindu nor muslim nor christian nor jew nor male nor female it is said that god in made you as light we are all light at another time i will relate it to one of the hindu scriptures called upanishad and in one of the upanishads the seeker very advanced seekers when i look at the questions of some of you they are it is like being an advanced student who is not satisfied with ordinary answers and questions he wants to explore deeper and deeper and deeper it says what is that knowing which everything becomes known can you finish what is that activates the speech in me what is that hears in me what is that sees in me what is that tastes in me what is that the master answers that and that forms the theme of ken upanishad only an intelligent student will ask is there anything beyond love love is dualistic love requires the masculine and feminine energy as long as it is not that a hindu will not be dualistic or hindu will be dualistic or a muslim following a, a sufi path will be dualistic or cannot go beyond duality but an ordinary student is not interested in going beyond he has explored you remember the story i have told you a poor woodcutter was cut, used to collect wood in the forest and one day he saw a sufi and sitting under a tree he told him why you don't go a little to the side there is a copper mine he went and he started exploring copper continue and make his fortune then one day the master that appeared again and he said are you satisfied with that there is a still deeper in the wood if you go there is a silver mine then there is a gold mine and after that he told him there is a diamond mine he continued to explore diamonds and then one day the sufi again appeared to him he said is still there is a deeper if you go in the wood there is another mine the poor woodcutter thought that what else could be more precious than diamonds the master said don't you know that i know about all these and yet still i'm not interested in any of these they are rare students who are not interested in copper silver gold or diamond they want to go deeper into it and it gives a tremendous pleasure to me that there are people in the fold who are interested in going beyond the diamonds diamonds we know that it is the most precious but there is something more precious than diamond only a master knows and he feels very happy when someone is interested in that so the ordinary ordinarily the path of sufis or islam wherever there is love the path of love is dualistic 
but there are realms beyond duality sometimes you are given a vision to see that so you can ask a question is there anything beyond duality yes it is only then when life really begins your inner journey really begins when you go beyond duality until then you are the, you look at the birds fly it uses the two wings the duality is to be used to reach to that height but when the bird reaches in the vastness of the open sky it does not even flap its wings it simply lays stretch its wings and continue to float that is beyond duality when the seeker reaches to that state he is not dualistic he has transcended duality and he is in a totally a different kind of realm this comes through the proper understanding of our life our body our mind and all that which relates to us i will continue on 